Good morning, everybody. So it's December the 28th, and I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas weekend. But just before Christmas weekend, we had news that uh, the UK government had signed a Brexit deal with the European Union. So I want to set out my thoughts on this. I haven't uh, done that uh, up to now, except in a couple of tweets. My initial thoughts were that I was worried. And the reason I was worried about this is because the mainstream media were almost universally in favour of this, celebrating it, saying what a wonderful relief it was. And uh, that's a mainstream media that had been completely against Brexit, brazenly biased in favour of remaining in the EU. And they're all suddenly uh, singing its praises and celebrating and saying how wonderful Boris Johnson is and uh, how wonderful life is going to be with this Brexit deal. Now, also the CBI, which represents global business, big, big business, not small and medium sized British enterprises, was also uh, celebrating and singing its praises and saying what a great relief it was. Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, without even seeing the document, said he was going to vote for it. Uh, obviously, he had to pretend to be a little bit grumpy, but uh, he came out in favour of uh, voting for it immediately. It was published, it wasn't published, but it was announced in the afternoon of Christmas Eve, just at the time before Christmas Day, when there wouldn't be much scrutiny of this because everyone wants to just get on and, and have Christmas. So the timing of this, I think, was quite a cynical timing for such an important announcement. And it's only going to have one day of parliamentary scrutiny on the 30th of December. So the most far-reaching document and treaty or contract that we're going to sign um, this century, perhaps, is only going to get one day of parliamentary scrutiny. It's going to be rushed through both the Commons and the Lords, and then that will be it. And it's 1,250 pages. And there's no way that that can be properly scrutinised to see all of the ramifications of every uh, part and article of this huge long document in such a short amount of time. So to me, they are all clear warning signs that the detail of what's in there might come back to bite us. Now, nevertheless, looking at the headlines, there are these smaller documents which outline the major points, which are only five or ten pages. Um, what I would say about it is, look, there are some good things in there, but I cannot celebrate this treaty, this contract, because our fishermen have been sold out completely. And one of the major things about Brexit would be we would get back our sovereignty over our laws, our borders, our money, our agriculture and our fishing grounds and our trade. We haven't got back sovereignty over our fishing grounds. We should take back 100% control immediately. But uh, the Johnson government has given away huge amounts of our quota uh, to the EU for the next five and a half years. And the understanding is that the EU will continue to have 75% of their current quota forevermore after that. That seems to be the understanding. Now, if I'm wrong, I hope I am. Wonderful. I'm wrong. Uh, and we get it all back after five and a half years. But that doesn't seem to be uh, what's been agreed. Uh, so we really need to scrutinise every last sentence of this deal to make sure that our fishermen are not sold out forever, um, which appears to be what might be the case. 
though also Northern Ireland remains in the single market. Great Britain comes out of the single market. We all come out of the customs union, but there's going to be a regulatory border down the Irish Sea. And uh, we can diverge in regulations from the EU in Great Britain, but Northern Ireland has to stay in lockstep with EU regulations. So down the line, that's going to cause problems uh, to the Union, uh, our country, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So those are two of the very worst things about this deal, and that has to be said. Uh, another bad thing is that we've agreed to a level playing field, which means that well, we can set our own laws, but if the European Union thinks that we make any laws which take us out of step with it in certain areas, they can impose trade tariffs upon us. The areas which we've got to stay uh, in step with the European on the European Union on are democracy, no problem with that whatsoever. Workers' rights, no problem with that whatsoever. The UK has always had better working rights than the EU. It's no problem. Um, climate change. So we've got to stay signed up to the Paris Climate Change Agreement and uh, all of EU regulations on climate change and carbon pricing and all of these kind of things. The whole climate change um, narrative is complete nonsense. Carbon dioxide is not a demonic gas that's going to kill everybody. Uh, but what we'll have to do is have tighter and tighter restrictions on carbon dioxide emissions, which means that we're going to be um, unable to choose our own energy policy if a future government comes into power and says, well, we want more gas power stations uh, we're to, to keep the lights on, they won't be able to do it. So that could cause problems down the line. And the other area is human rights. Now, the European Convention on Human Rights is very, very good. The original convention, I'm all in favour of it. But what isn't good is that we have to stay in lockstep with all of the judgments that come from the European Court of Human Rights, which now are increasingly made by woke activist judges. And so we are in the situation where, for example, we cannot uh, immediately deport all of the foreign terrorists and criminals which may uh, come to our shores. Uh, we have to give prisoners the vote, even if we don't want to, uh, as law in this country, um, because of judgments made by the European Court of Human Rights and so on. So the original convention, which is good, is being interpreted quite often in ways which are bad and detrimental to what uh, people would want in this country. So that's a whole debate that needs to happen. We need to keep human rights, but we need to be able to apply fundamental human rights, but be able to deport foreign criminals and terrorists uh, to keep British people safe. And we're not allowed to do that. And this um, agreement, as I can see, keeps us tied into that. So that's something which needs to be looked at in the future. So those are all areas of unfinished business that we've got. Uh, we've got to take back full control of our fishing waters, 100% control of the quotas in our exclusive economic zone. We've got to um, make sure that Northern Ireland stays within the United Kingdom. Uh, we've got to be able to uh, take back control of human rights law uh, in this country in a way that suits this country and this country's citizens. And we've got to get out of the Paris Climate Agreement and all of the climate change narratives. So these are four areas that we need 
the need further work done and uh, further um, bringing back of sovereignty in those areas to this country. We don't have full sovereignty over those areas, but we do have full sovereignty in other things, and that's good. We have sovereignty back over our trade, and one of the positive things of this, of course, is that we continue to trade tariff-free and quota-free with the European Union. Um, that's going to benefit uh, people shopping in this country because uh, we will get goods in on time. We won't, there won't be any delays um, and uh, goods will be, be cheaper because they won't have any tariffs on them. It'll be better for our exporters as well. So that's a good thing. Um, and uh, that, that's fantastic. We'll, travelers will be able to go to the European Union. Uh, we'll be able to spend 50% uh, of our time in the EU. Uh, if you want to do that, want to go on holiday, want to go and travel, that could have been a lot worse. We could have, um, they could have imposed a 30-day limit on us or something, but we can go 90 days out of every 180 days. We've got uh, agreements in road transport and aviation, so planes can keep coming and going and using our skies and using each other's airports. So, so that's all positive. And uh, we are out of the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice for most things. Not everything, because in the withdrawal agreement uh, that was signed in January, Boris Johnson signed us up to keep us in the ECJ for eight years in certain uh, areas for EU uh, citizens' rights, for example. If they want to bring a case against uh, the UK government for, for social security or something like that, they can go to the ECJ. Um, for the next eight years. That will end, but it's going to be a long time. But for most things, uh, we're out of the ECJ, so that's a good thing as well. So with this deal, and, and the correct word for it really is a contract. I mean, that's how the, the Europeans see it. The, the German word for a treaty or a contract is the same. It's ein Vertrag. It's a very hard word. Um, it's not an agreement or a deal which has a much softer connotation in English. It's, they see it as a very hard contract that we have to stick to. Uh, and if we don't stick to it, then they will impose tariffs on us or, or, or some other things might take place which are unpleasant. Um, so, so with this, there's some good things. Um, it's We are better off than where we would be, uh, we, where we could have been. Um, I don't think it's as good as leaving with no deal. Uh, if we'd left with no deal, all of those things that I've mentioned before uh, would have been sorted out. Um, and then the, the European Union would have come back to the table, I think, almost immediately and asked us for tariff-free, uh, quota-free trade in goods, because that will benefit them more than it will benefit us because they sell more to the UK than we sell to them. But, but that's done now. Um, it's going to be debated on Wednesday. Uh, I hope there's a proper debate. And what I think is that we should just debate it provisionally. And then there should be two months of thorough real scrutiny of this, which is what European nations are being allowed to do. They've got until the end of February to go through, pour through all of the documents uh, before they ratify. And that's what should happen here. There's no way that such a, a long, uh, you know, far-reaching contract with, with, with such a profound effect uh, on us uh, for, for decades to come uh, should be rush through Parliament in one day. We should have a period of intense scrutiny of this so that we <coughs> know exactly what we're getting, everyone knows exactly what we're getting, and uh, we can decide properly uh, without it being rushed through. Um, so those are my brief um, second impressions, if you like, uh, subsequent to my, my first impressions. Uh, on Christmas Eve, and I'm sure that I'll be saying more about it as uh, I look through it uh, in more detail over the days to come.